Hey, can uh, we give Jesus one more big hand right now? Jesus. It's about Jesus. Come on, we can do a little bit better than that. Let's give the Lord a hand. He's so good. He's so good. Okay, so welcome back to, we're in week two of what we're calling the Holy Spirit series because we're talking about the Holy Spirit. That makes sense, right? So, so we kicked it off last week, and uh, we really talked about who He is, who is the Holy Spirit, touched on some of what what he does in our lives. And listen, if you, for whatever reason, miss that, please go back and watch it because it is foundational to the rest of this series and uh, really to, to your walk with God. And in fact, uh, you know, I would, I would love to hear from you. I love hearing what God is doing through church and through messages. Man, I, I just, I want to ask you to get on Facebook, text me, uh, call me, Whatever your preferred method of communication is, get it out there, man. We want to talk about this stuff. I would love to hear what the Holy Spirit is doing in your life, especially uh, through, through this study in the Word of God, okay? Um, so today, here's what we're going to do. Week two, it's all about how the Holy Spirit wants to lead our lives. And we're going to talk about the leading of the Holy Spirit. And so let me, let me clarify. Uh, we're going to review just a little bit. The Holy Spirit uh, is the third person. In the Trinity. He, he is a person. He is God. So that means that he can be everywhere at the same time. But Jesus said this. He told his disciples this. He said, I, I'm going away and I'm, I'm going back to the Father. And then I am going to send another helper. I've been with you, but I'm going to send. And he said, it's actually better for you that this happens. I'm going to send another helper. Everybody say help. Now say it like you need some. Exactly. See, Jesus knew you needed that. And uh, man, so, so the Holy Spirit, this is what I want to key on today. The Holy Spirit has a role in our lives. In fact, he has a key function. This is what he does. And, and so what is it? Think about it. What, what is the role of the Holy Spirit in our lives? It is, it's just helping. Helping me, helping you personally walk through this spiritual life that God has given us on the earth until ultimately we're in eternity with the Holy Spirit by our side in us, never leaving us, never forsaking us, helping us every step of the way. That is the Holy Spirit's role. And we're going to talk about walking in the Spirit today. Everybody say walk. Man, so that's what he's here for, to help us personally walk out the life that God has given us. Speaking of walking, um, how many would agree that during this snowpocalypse, it's been pretty precarious <laughs> walking? Many of y'all walked on your driveway, right? Um, maybe you even got some video of you or someone else walking uh, on, on the ice. By the way, please send that if you haven't. Candace, I'm looking at you. Where is she? There she is. Okay. She had a little experience with that. But how many of y'all you have ever had that feeling of slipping on ice? Is it like the worst moment in your life? Like that immediate moment when you slip, it, it, it is it's scary. It's like your whole life flashes before your eyes. And, you, and, and your body, it instinctively does something, okay? First of all, it spazzes out. But, but, but what is it doing? It's trying to grab onto something, anybody, anything. There's nobody around, but you're grabbing for them, right? Why? Because your body needs help, and your mind knows it. You need help. And the Holy Spirit, listen guys, in your life was sent for that very reason. It's because the key to getting everything that God wants for you in your life, look at me, is being led by the Holy Spirit. That's the key. That's the key. So anything you need, man, all that God has for you here, here in this life, the Holy Spirit wants to help you in walking into that. Can I have an amen on that? And so I really believe that for some of you, some of you, this is what's been missing in your life for a long time. Like you, you, you said your prayer one time when you were 12 and you got saved and you believe God and you love God with all your heart, but that's it. You don't know anything about what I'm talking about today. And, and the Holy Spirit's like, I want to help, but we're going to help you understand that today. Okay. He wants us to be led by him. That's the thing. Romans eight fourteen. Look at this verse for all who are led by the Spirit of God, are children of God. Love that verse. That could kind of be our theme for the day. 
Look at John 16, verse 13 through 14. And I know we're hopping around here, but it'll be on the screen. He said, this goes back to Jesus talking about the, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit that was to come. He said, however, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you. That's what I'm talking about. Guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. That's useful. He's going to say, there's snow coming. And a lot of it. No, I mean, he might have. He will glorify me, for he will take, this is what Jesus is saying about the Holy Spirit. He'll glorify me. Excuse me. For he's going to take of what is mine and declare it to you. Okay, so before I talk about how, how to be led by the Holy Spirit, what, I want to take just a few moments and also point out and show you how we can be led astray as well. Because we're going to be led by something in our lives. And, uh, and the Holy Spirit wants it to be Him. But we, look, some of this we touched on a few weeks ago, so I'll make it fast. But I'm led astray by following culture. Okay, this is the opposite of being led by the Holy Spirit. I'm led astray from God's will, right, when I'm led by culture. How many of y'all remember me saying this many times, that culture, it just changes so much, right? Exodus 23, 2 says this, do not follow the crowd in doing wrong. Don't follow the crowd. <laughs> if you look, look at thousands of years of history in your Bible, you're going to see the same problem over and over. Israel, Israel wanted to be like all the other nations over and over and over again, and it got them into so much trouble. Guess what? We're the same today. We're the same today. And, and, and some of you, some, some Christians, they want to, we just want to be like everybody else, the rest of the world. Y'all look at me. God has set you apart as holy. And you have got to accept it and embrace that. All right? If you want to fit in and look like the rest of the crowd, you are going to be led astray every time. How else am I led astray? Well, I'm led astray by reading too much into circumstances. If they could put that on the screen. Look at this. I want them to leave that there. i got to be real careful here because it, it's, it's an interesting theological minefield, <laughs> if you will. But I, I'm led astray by reading too much into circumstances. And I said that on purpose because it is true that God, God can use all kinds of circumstances. How many of y'all know this is true that God will use open doors in your life? He'll also use closed doors. Thank God for the closed doors. <laughs> I don't want to go there again. But I'm just telling you that is all true. But I'm talking about when people say all things happen for a reason, it must be God's hand. Well, that's not true. I mean, listen, yeah, all things do happen for a reason. Sometimes it's because we have stupid people on the planet, all right? Is it okay if I get real with you? I mean, and, and, and I'm telling you, here's the thing you got to understand. God can use all things in your life and turn those things around for your good. In fact, Romans 8, 28, and it's one of my favorites, that God will make all things work to your good. Those who love God and are called according to his purpose, I believe that's you. I believe that's me. So yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. But, but you got to watch out because we, we, uh, we live in a fallen creation. We have free will on this planet. And uh, man, it is rough sometimes, <laughs> okay? And, and what I'm talking about is, okay, you're in a traffic jam, or, or this is my favorite. You wake up late one day. Well, I guess God didn't want me to go to work. <laughs> Somebody said amen back there in the back corner. Well, I'm having a bad hair day. I guess I can't go to church. Whatever, you know. They didn't, they didn't pass the offering plate. Okay, we'll, we'll leave that alone. Okay, keep going. Uh oh, now, okay. Here's what I'm trying to say. If you lead your life according to circumstances, Satan is going to set you up for a big disaster. It's going to be bad. I want you to go back and read this. We're not going to look at this right now, but many of you know this story in the book of Acts where Paul... He's a prisoner at this point, and he's waiting to be transported to Rome, and they're trying to get him on a ship, but it's not sailing season, 
and, and the crew is all like, we're going to go for it, all this. And he even has a prophetic word, Paul does. And he tells them, hey, we don't need to be sailing right now. The Lord says no. But, and I'm reading this from the word right now. This is what it says. Listen to this. But a gentle breeze came up and they thought, this is exactly what we wanted. You know what? They ended up sailing right into a hurricane. Do you remember this? Man, how deceptive is that gentle breeze sent from hell sometimes? Come on now. Y'all want to testify? I'm just kidding. I'm just telling you, look, you have got to get to a place of maturity where you say, I'm not led by circumstances. It doesn't matter. I'm not led by circumstances. I'm led by the Holy Spirit. Because, okay, ladies in here, you know that dating app you use, whatever it is. Man, I'm just telling you, you might look at that guy and think, this is exactly what I wanted. I'm telling you, swipe right, swipe up, or throw your phone in a lake or something, okay? Because when you follow something else other than the living water, man, you are asking for trouble. I'm telling you right now, this is how we end up in a problem. What else? What else? Is it okay if I'm just teaching you today? I'm also led astray by following my feelings. Now, I spent a lot of time talking to this church about feelings. Oh, my goodness. Because, look, you got to understand, feelings are not bad. I mean, God made them. They're not bad, right? They're not all bad anyway. Uh, but they're temporary. All of them. Okay, so, so, I mean, you might have a panic attack one day. That's not good. It's temporary, though. Or the opposite, you might be at Disney World, you have the time of your life, you're totally elated. This is the best thing in the world. And so I'm so happy. It's temporary. Especially if you're charging in your credit card, it's very temporary. <laughs> like two seconds. <laughs> okay, give me here's an example in my life. Okay, so most of you know that I'm an LSU guy. I graduated from there, so I'm attached there. To, to that school. And so we won the national championship in the last legitimate football season that was had. And so anyway, but even that, look, even all that national championship, that, that's about a three out of a 10 in my life right now. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Maybe sometimes a four or five, but it's like, yeah, that's great. Everything, look, all these feelings we experience in life, ups and downs, they're temporary. They're temporary. Since your feelings change, they are not good leaders. Not only do they change, they also lie to us all the time. Our feelings lie. You're going to think this example is theoretical, but what I'm about to tell you, it happens all the time. Guy divorces his wife. Says, oh, you know, I just felt a peace about it. I, I felt like I should marry so-and-so instead of who I was married to right now. Oh, God gave me a peace about it. I'm going to tell you like my friend says all the time. That ain't God. <laughs> That's feelings, and they're temporary, and they lie to us, okay? Look at this, Galatians 5, verse 16. By the way, feelings can be really good servants, but they're terrible masters. So I say to you, walk by the Spirit. Come on, listen to Paul's advice. I say walk by the Spirit. That's what we're talking about. And you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. There's the answer to some of you that are so controlled by different things in your life. He says, hey, walk by the Spirit, and you won't spend all your time gratifying the desires of the flesh. Now, a little bad news, good news here, okay? We know we're on our way to heaven. We know we're saved. Our spirits are made alive. But let me just tell you the little bit of bad news. As long as we're alive in these bodies, our flesh, also known as the sinful nature, that part of us that still does not want to please God, is always going to talk to us. But here's the cool thing. If we're being led by the Spirit of God, God always has the last word in our lives. And that's what we're aiming for, okay? So, so with all that, talked about how to be led astray. I want to avoid that. How, how does the Holy Spirit lead us? That's what I want to talk about. How does the Holy Spirit lead us as believers? And uh, we started digging into a scripture last week in Ephesians chapter 5. I want to go back there and expand it a little bit, but I'm actually looking at it in a different translation. Look at verse 15. We're going to start there. See then that you walk circumspectly, which uh, it means carefully. 
I had to look it up as well. No, no shame in your game, all right? Okay, so, so in fact, one translation, lots of translations say it that way. See then that you walk carefully, okay? Carefully. Walk carefully. Everybody say that. That's what we're called to. Not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And don't be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation. Some translations say debauchery. That's what we said last week. But be filled with the Spirit. Again, talked a lot about that. Look at verse 19. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. There are so many things in this passage, and I want to show them to you. There's so many great pieces of wisdom that show us how to stay in a place where we can hear the voice of the Lord, where we can hear the leading of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And so first off, he says, walk. He uses the word intentionally, walk. Um, And walking implies a few things, right? Especially walking carefully. The first thing that walking implies in your life is this, is that the Holy Spirit is taking you somewhere. Look, the Holy Spirit is taking you somewhere in life. You're not just walking around in circles. He's not leading you down a dead-end road. He's got a goal. He has a destination in mind for you. And you want to know what it is? You want to know? I can tell you what it is. You ready? It's God's good, pleasing, and perfect will. That's where he's taking you. And so, so some of you, again, maybe you're not used to this. You don't understand how to do all this. But some of you do. But when you do get this going in your life and you're being led by the Spirit, your life gets some traction in it. Like, it's amazing. Your life starts expanding and growing. And you get to experience, like, things are getting good. Not necessarily perfect, but things get good. And you get to experience this feeling like, wow, I'm doing way better than I used to do. Like, this is incredible. I'm at my best right now. And, and man, I, I'm, I'm like, all, all the fruit that's coming out of this, the fruit of the Spirit, is showing up in every place of my life. That's the destination he's taking you to. You're going someplace. You're walking this thing out with the Holy Spirit. This is what he wants to do. What else does walking imply? It also implies continuous motion right? This is it. Walking with the Holy Spirit is continuous motion. Maybe you've heard this phrase. Maybe you've said it yourself. Well, I've been walking with the Lord now for 20 years. I said it like that because this is a very Southern religious phrase. (laughs) Let me tell you, they don't say that up North, all right, or out West. I've been walking for, I've been walking with the Lord now for 15 years. Yes. And, And what does that mean? What it means is walking says that I don't stop serving God. I don't stop serving God. That's walking, it's continuous motion. By the way, this word serving God, when we look at it, serving in that context in the New Testament, it comes from a Greek word, obviously, but the original meaning of that word, serve, is to kick up dust. Hey, let's kick up dust and not collect dust. Can we do that as Christians? (laughs) Move forward. All right, I gotta tell you. Kamani and I have been watching this uh, old series on Hulu uh, called American Pickers. Come on, hashtag snowpocalypse. This is what you do, right? Okay. <laughs> so we've been watching this thing, right? And it's amazing. These two dudes, they roll around in a van like all around the United States and they find junk in like people's garages and their barns and talk about dusty, man. It's dusty and rusty. And they find this stuff but it's old and dusty, but it's valuable. And I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is telling you, look, you are valuable. Don't sit around. Look, you were not meant to sit around and collect dust in the kingdom of heaven. No, motion, man, forward, knock the dust off. Some of y'all got to knock some rust off and let's move forward. Look at Galatians 5.25. Two people laughed on that. I'm sorry. Galatians 5.25. The rest of y'all are like, okay. All right. 
since we, come on, let's get some scripture up in here. Since we live by the Spirit, that's going to come out great on the video. <laughs> since we live by the Spirit, look at this. Let us keep in step with the Spirit. Now, call me crazy, but this reminds me of my dog, Molly. Keeping in step. She has a real hard time keeping in step with anybody that's trying to lead her. Uh, we, we have her on a leash, you know, just kind of walking around. I'll, I'll be walking her, and she wants to run out in front like she's leading me. And I'm like, I get sick of it, and, and finally I realize what's happening. I just stand still. I stop so that she has to stop too. And I pull her behind me, and I say, get behind me, Satan. <laughs> and I have to actually like walk her like that. And so, so she also does the opposite, though, especially with my son, Jonathan. So Jonathan will take her out when she has to go to the bathroom. We have to go hook her up on the runner in the backyard. She's got to go to the bathroom. So Jonathan takes her. And so <laughs> Molly will get so distracted and just sit down. And then it's like, Molly, she can't be moved. And so Jonathan is tugging at her, come on, come on, come on. Come on, girl. I know you got to go to the bed. You got to poop. Let's go. Come on. I know you got to go. Come on. You can do it. And I, I got this picture like I really believe that sometimes we're like that with the Holy Spirit. Come on, James. You can do it. I know you got to go. Come on. Follow. Let's go. Stop getting so distracted, all right? Walking, man. Walking implies continuous motion. What else? Next one. Walking. Especially, look, walking, I should put carefully in here. Walking carefully. It shows dependence. That's what it illustrates. When you're walking carefully, it in, it, it's talking about dependence there. And what do I mean? Like when you're walking, especially walking carefully, you know, you, you take a step. Okay, and now I'll put all my weight on that spot, I'm depending on whatever is there under my foot. I take another step, we're a little shaky, and I'm going to put my foot in this next spot. Now, all my weight is depending, right, on what's under me. And again, you know, recently, this whole process during the snowpocalypse has been very, very methodical for some of you, right? You want to make sure you get it right. But this is what, walking in the Spirit, I'm about to share with you what this looks like, okay? So for the next... Three or four minutes, come on, lock in, because walking in the Spirit, it's a lot about dependence. And here's what it, it's daily admitting. This is what it looks like, guys. Getting up every day, and you're admitting to the Holy Spirit, okay, I'm trusting you today. I cannot do this on my own. Holy Spirit, help me. Because this is very important. This is what it looks like to walk in the Spirit. Because as soon as you say, I've got this on my own, it's over. Because the Holy Spirit will not hang around with pride. Right? You know, you've seen some places in the Bible, the Holy Spirit is described as a dove. That's because doves, what are, what are doves like? I mean, think about it. They kind of come up to you, I guess. I mean, they, they get, if they get near you... I'm not really an expert in doves, but I know this. If you hurt them, it's like, coo, and they fly away. That was a dove cooing, right? Right, you scare it, you know, like you, you hurt them some way, I'm out of here. I want to do the little thing, but I can't. I got a microphone, but I'm really good at it. So I told my wife, I might just have to put the microphone down for this illustration. No. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> that is you offending the Holy Spirit. <laughs> we might not come back now, guys. All right. Hey, everybody, look here, look here. When you are daily dependent on him, though, you actually attract the Holy Spirit's working in your life. And so this is what I want you to get. Because actually, when you're, when you're confessing daily your dependence on the Holy Spirit, it unlocks the Holy Spirit to fulfill his main mission in your life. And here's the payoff. Ready? There's a few things I see when you're doing this every day. First of all, when you read the word, it's going to come alive to you. Holy Spirit, I'm desperate for you. Okay, I'm reading. Wow! I mean, this is the way it works. This is Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. Because now he's beginning to lead you through his word. Also, the church becomes a family. 
You're connecting with brothers and sisters in Christ who actually can speak into your life. And guess what? The Holy Spirit is using them also to help lead you. Hey, the pastor will preach to you and show you fun illustrations and you will think, he is speaking directly to me. The man is spying on my life. But I'm not. Although you on Facebook now. Okay, some of you, well, okay. But for real, the Holy Spirit is, is talking to you. He's, he's leading you, okay? And here's the biggest one. Here's one that I want you to get. This is very, very important. This is also part of the payoff. You will get an inward witness. This is so important. An inner witness or an inward witness. Listen, you're going to need this. Because there won't be a verse on everything in life. Okay, hang with me here. There's a ton of moral principles and guidelines in this book. It, it, and, and, and we have to abide by them. But it's not like every single thing that you go through specific to your life circumstances, like what city should I move to? You get what I'm saying. Okay, so you need to obey the word and the Holy Spirit's voice. It's like I talk about the different wills of God. You know, there's the sovereign will of God. That's the will of God that's going to happen no matter who here is praying for it. doesn't even matter. Jesus is coming back one day, whether you believe it, whether you care about it, whether you pray for it or not. That's the sovereign will of God. But there's two more types of his will. One of them is the moral will, and the other is a specific will for your life. The moral will of God is right here, the Word of God. They're like barriers. We talked a lot about this. They're barriers that keep you on the path, walking in God's plan. But what about the specific will for your life? So therefore, you need the word and you need his voice. You need that inward conviction. You need real peace from heaven. I'm not talking about a feeling. I'm talking about a knowing, a peace, okay? And I know there's always that one weirdo that like has to wait on a word from God even to get dressed in the morning. You know, like what color shirt does God want me to wear? I get it, okay? But here's what I'm asking you to do. And I, 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 don't, I don't throw out truth, things that are true, just because of weirdos and counterfeits. I just press on toward the real stuff. And this is real. You need him. There will be a time in your life when you, you, you need that inner, inner witness to your spirit. Like, hey, should I take chemo or not? Should I have this major surgery or just live with it? What job should I take? Should I marry that girl? Y'all know these are big issues in life. Hey, should I take that person that I love off of life support? These are issues. The Holy Spirit is going to speak to you about them. And as your pastor, listen, I cannot be the deciding vote on what the Lord wants the Holy Spirit to vote on in your life. It's not my role. It's not anybody's role. Nothing wrong with getting advice. That's not what I'm saying. But there's some things, ultimately, you're going to have to get the peace of God on, and that is what I'm talking about. That is the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. So how do I stay tuned into that leading? I told you I was going to give you a little more about that. What, what kind of things do I need going on in my life where I stay in tune with his leading? Well, he, he, here's, here's the how, okay? More clues from Ephesians 5. Look back at verse 18. Be filled with the Spirit. By the way, if you've never asked the Lord to do that, please do that. Ask him, he will. Verse 19, speaking to one another in Psalms, but fast forward, look. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Here's what we're talking about right now. It's gonna help you tune into the Holy Spirit. An atmosphere of worship. An atmosphere of worship. The Holy Spirit, he fills an environment that is filled with worship to God. So if you don't have this going on in your life, you're not gonna hear from the Holy Spirit. Now, we know that worship is way more than just song, although that's a part of it. It's your lifestyle. It's the way that you please him. Men, men, God wants your worship. He does. Women as well. We, he wants all of our worship. I'll tell you this, a great example in the Bible is when Paul and Barnabas were at Antioch, as a church they planted, and they're worshiping and they're fasting. It, it was in a worship setting like we just had. And the Holy Spirit spoke and said, set apart Barnabas and Paul for this mission. I have this thing I want them to do. That happened in the context of worship. 
So we got to have this going on in our lives, right? An atmosphere of worship. It's why it's so important to, to be in church and to praise God's name together and in your car and in your living room and all, all the time, okay? Worship, an atmosphere of worship. What else? Giving thanks always for all things. Come on, everybody say thanks. Hey, you're welcome. Uh, okay. <laughs> Giving thanks for all things too to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus. Look, this is an attitude of thankfulness. So we've got an atmosphere of worship that helps, but also the attitude of thankfulness. The helper, the Holy Spirit is very comfortable around gratitude. The Holy Spirit, in fact, will add to your life in areas that you recognize and appreciate the hand of God. Practice it, man. And if the only time you're ever thanking God is when you sit down to dinner and thank him for your food, you're way behind the curve, brother. I'm just telling you, that's legit, that's fine. But what about thanking God for your family if you have one? What about thanking God for your job? What about thanking God for this scenery we get to live in? It's incredible. Come on, I ask those people from South Arkansas. Listen, um, I'm just telling you, how about thanking God for your eternal salvation? Then no longer are you an enemy of God, you're a friend of God. Man, all day, every day, let's develop this attitude of thankfulness toward God, amen? Because when you do that, the Holy Spirit reacts like this. There's way more where that came from. It's attracting and then verse 21, submitting to one another in the fear of God. Submitting to one another. That's interesting that he puts that in the context of walking with God, walking in the Spirit. Submitting to one another. See, this is why you can't be a lone wolf Christian. It doesn't even work. You can't eat. The formula doesn't exist. You, there's no formula in God's math that shows you where you can be by yourself and walk in the Spirit. Because why? Submitting to one another in the fear of God. You got to have each other. What does this mean? It means serving. Come on, man. It's talking about putting others above yourself. You ever heard that in the word? This is, look, the Holy Spirit is a, a what? What do we call him at the very beginning? What's his title? He's a what? <laughs> helper. He's a helper. And so he clings to helpers. He loves it. It's, it's what he does. Here's a phrase that's just side for free on the side. This is going to help you win people over, man. Your spouse, your kids, people at work. Ready? Here it is. You ready? I can help you with that. I don't mind helping out with that. Boy, that is a powerful phrase. But way more powerful to the people you're helping, it's actually powerful in keeping you in tune with the Holy Spirit. Because again, the helper anoints those who love to help. And uh, all right, I want to wrap this up. We're going to pray. And... Uh, I'm not going to put it on the screen, but there's a verse in 2 Corinthians 3 that says that the Spirit, the Spirit of God, He brings life. The Spirit brings life. So look, the Spirit brings way more than knowledge, way more than doctrine, way more than all these other things. I mean, all that's great theology. Man, all these things are important, but the Holy Spirit gives you power and wisdom to actually walk out life every day. And listen, this is what he wants for you. Galatians 5.25. Last verse I'll show you. We already looked at this verse, but this is in a different translation. It says, since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Let's follow the Spirit's leading. Can we just do that? Maybe practice that. Practice recognizing it. The Holy Spirit wants to lead you in your life. He wants it. He wants to. But he never forces himself. He never forces his agenda. He never forces his work or his presence in anyone's life. He only abides where he is continually welcomed. So he's always ready, but only where we're willing and when we're willing. So can we pray? Can you bow your heads with me? Holy Spirit, we just invite you into this place. God, I'm just praying for New Life Church right now. All around this room, anyone who happens to be watching this video later on, God, I'm praying for us as a church, every person. Lord, that you would help us. God, if there's things that, first of all, 
are inhibiting your Holy Spirit. Show us those things. Just like David prayed, see if there's any offensive way in me and then lead me in the way everlasting. Just pray that way. If there's pride, God, we just, hey, I don't want that anymore. Forgive us of that, God. Lord, I pray that every person here would learn how to depend on you daily. Remind us every day to speak to you and to ask you for help, to not think we've got it. Lord, I pray that we can maintain an atmosphere of worship around our lives all the time and and thankfulness as well, Lord. And then serving, helping others, submitting our lives to other people in the body of Christ so that we will always be tuned in, Lord, to your leading. Oh, Holy Spirit, help us with this. We need it. I'm praying for those who've never even done this in their lives. God, this week, I pray they would sense the Holy Spirit's leading. All right, no one else looking around. I just want to give you an opportunity. I I, I want to do this every, every weekend. If there's somebody in here and they would say, I don't even know the Lord. I I, I don't know if I'm saved. I don't know if I'm going to heaven. I don't know if Jesus is the Lord of my life. Or you, you've run from him for so long, maybe you used to know him, but your walk doesn't look anything like it used to. And you want to recommit your life to the Lord. If you just need Jesus in your life, no one else looking around, I, I'm not calling you to the front, but if this is you, raise your hand right now. I want to know who I'm praying for. And look up at me if that is you. I'm just going to look around. If this is your day, Yeah, I see, I see one person. Anybody else? If this is you, this is the whole, you sense the Holy Spirit drawing you to Jesus, drawing you to forgiveness. That's the Holy Spirit's first task. This is what he does. All right, you can put your hands down. If that was you, pray something like this. Father, forgive me for trying to lead my own life. Jesus, forgive me. I'm putting my faith in you right now. I believe what you did on the cross. You died on the cross, paying the price that my sin deserved. But because you paid it, I can have a new life in you and I can be made right with the Father and I receive all that by faith right now. I believe it, I believe it. You said I could have it? I have it now. I'm asking you to give it to me. And Lord, give me that brand new life you talked about. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Connect me to your body, the church. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Hey, let's stand up.